Hello everyone, welcome to today's tutorial. I'm going to be showing you how to use the HTTP request node inside of N8N. Now this is perhaps one of the most important nodes that you'll be using inside this application and it is the most versatile. You can use it to get website content, to communicate with APIs and such, and I'll show you a couple of examples. So firstly, let's go ahead and let's get an HTTP request node. So. As you can see, there are different methods that you can use. There's a delete, get, uh, head options, blah, 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 and such. The most important ones I will say you'll be using the most often are the get and post request. These are the two most important ones. Um, in some rare cases, you will use the other ones, but for now, we will just focus on these two. So, for example, if you're communicating with an API, so you're using like Airtable, for example, now I know there's an already pre-built one inside of N8N, but you will have different request types. For example, if you want to create a record, we'll use a post request. Um, however, other ones such as getting records and such, you will use the get request. Next, what you have is the URL. This is the endpoint that you will be calling. So in Airtable, for example, you will have an Airtable URL that you want to call. This is where you're going to do your post request. Next, what you have is you can have authentication. Usually, this will be done inside of the headers category. So anytime you're looking, for example, at an API request, you'll see something called either bearer or authentication token or authorization token or API key. In Airtable, for example, you have what is called authorization. That will usually be your header. Now you can also have different another type of header. Usually we specify this as the application JSON that will go inside of your header. Now, usually inside of a get request, you will not be sending any body parameters, um, but in a post request, this is usually information that you want to send over to your application, you will be using this send body tab. There are other options as you can see over here, batching, ignore SSL, um, but you won't be usually using these very much. Um, one that you could be using is a redirects. If you are uh, scraping a web page, sometimes it will redirect you to another URL. This is in one of those instances that you want to use that. Uh, you can specify the amount of redirects you want to follow. Another one that you could be using is the response one. I would say this would probably be the most common one that you would use in the option category. Um, for example, if you want to, um, call, let's say we want to call the Airtable uh, website. So we will go to Airtable.com and we want to call this URL. And so you have a bunch of HTML data However, if you go down, all the way down here, you can actually see a status code and your status message. That would, for example, be your response headers and status. Um, you also have the option to put never error. For instance, if your, um, your HTTP request is invalid, this could be for a variety of different reasons and you don't want it to break your workflow, uh, you can add this never error um, option and toggle it on. And sometimes this is actually important for if you are monitoring a certain website and it goes down, you can toggle this option and send you a notification. All right though, let's get into some actual use cases where we can use this. So for this first example, I showed you that you can use this to uh, call a website. Now, this is what you pretty much do every single day when you are going on YouTube or going on to your email, for example. You're basically using an HTTP request and calling that URL and then the server is returning data to you. Um, the other type of common requests that you'll be doing are API requests. And this is very, very crucial, especially in automation. So let's get into the first one. First one that I want to do is I want to do a get request and I will just do a simple list records in my CRM, for example. So as you can see, I have a bunch of different records over here and I just want to list all of them inside my 
um, my automation. So what I will do is I will go to the, this is what we call a builder's hub inside of Airtable and it shows you all the different request types. So we'll go to the list requests. I'm going to copy this URL and this will be a get request. So I will need to create a token. Don't worry, I will be revoking this afterwards. So let's go here, copy that. Now next what we actually do need is we don't need the body, but we do need headers. And the reason for this is because you want to make sure that no one can access this except yourself. So you will need to use the scopes, the data read, records, writes, and such. You can just look at this. I'm gonna copy my API key. Now, as you can see over here, we do, this is the one header we need, authorization, and we need to include this bearer before our API key. This is not always the case. Sometimes you will just only need to enter your API key, but sometimes they will ask you to put this bearer before. So let's just go back to our, um, our innate end workflow. And I believe it said authorization. I will just double check that bearer and then paste in our API key. Let me just make sure it said, yeah, authorization, perfect. All right, so now we will just test the step. And there we go. So you can see that we have listed out our records over here. And this is just using the get request. Now, the other most common type of HTTP request you can use is the post request. This is, for example, if we want to actually create a record within our Airtable. Now, I'm just using Airtable as an example. You could be using other varieties of applications. Um, and you will just have to look through their documentation. If you're working with Go High Level, for example, and you want to work with automations there, you can look through their API documentation and they will have a list of uh, different posts and GET requests that you want to work with. Um, but I'm just using Airtable for today. So let's go change this to post. We will need to change our URL. So we'll go to create a record and we need to copy this URL. Go back to our workflow. Uh, paste this in. So we still need to use this authorization and this bearer token, as you can see inside of here. Now, the one thing that we need to add in addition to this is the content type. So we'll just copy this content type application JSON. Let's go back here, copy this. Perfect. Now, the difference is that we need to actually send a body parameter. Now, you could use the, body, uh, the using fields below, but I will be using the JSON field here. So I'm going to change this to expression. Go back to our documentation. Now, I just need only this section here. So it's two, one. Okay, so up to here, basically. I will go back in here, paste this. Now we actually don't need this over here because this is done automatically inside of Airtable, but we will need this. So I'm just gonna make up a different name over here. Um, say uh, I will just use the name Willow and I'll just say willow at gmail.com. Just making up some stuff over here. Now we have everything we need. Let's just go ahead and test the step. So. There we go, it said it executed successfully. So let's go back to our Airtable and there we go. So now we have a new record created in our CRM. So this is just a basic tutorial on how to actually use the HTTP request. This will be probably one of the most po nodes that most popular nodes that you use inside of N8N. It is the most versatile and the most commonly used, especially if you do not have a pre-built integration inside of the software. So if you don't have an application that is already here, you will be using this HTTP request node. So I hope you enjoyed today's short tutorial and let me know if you have any questions and thank you for watching.